Hello, this is Dr. Rhonda Johnson, and today is Friday, March 3rd, 2023. And today I'm doing a farewell to a great resource. Well, I started recording COVID informational uh, videos in March 2020, and every March I sort of reevaluate what I'm doing in this space and how long I will continue doing so. But one of the resources of very uh, factual and reliable information that I have turned to throughout this uh, pandemic is the John Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center. Well, this wonderful resource center is scheduled to shut down next Friday, March 10th, three years after the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a pandemic. For me, this is one more symbolic reminder of the end of the pandemic and in recognition of this wonderful resource that I'm saying farewell to, I would uh, wanted to share some of the key takeaways from experts uh, in the March news third newsletter. So I'll call this like a COVID-19 wrap up report, except don't forget COVID's not over. So here we go. As of today, nearly 7 million people have lost their lives and nearly 680 million people have confirmed cases of COVID around the world since the start of the pandemic. Here in the United States, we know that more than 1.1 million people have died from COVID-19. We know that most people in the United States at least have some immunity against this virus as a consequence of vaccination, infection, or hybrid of both. Now, the experts note that the primary objective with the vaccines is protection against severe disease, hospitalization, and death, and they say that the current vaccines do that. Now, they note that 19% of the U.S. population has not received a single COVID vaccine, and people between the ages of 18 to 24 are least likely to have been vaccinated. Now, when it comes to politics and the COVID-19 vaccines, the experts note that those who lean Republican are less likely to be vaccinated than those who lean Democrat. Now, when it comes to the future of COVID vaccines, one of the experts said that we don't know if people need to be vaccinated every year or less frequently to be protected against severe COVID. We still have so much to learn about this novel virus. That part is my opinion. They also note that many of the hundreds of vaccines still in development will never make it to the marketplace. Now, when it comes to long COVID, we still have a long way to go in understanding long COVID, according to these experts. And they state that long COVID has many detrimental effects, including health, emotional, and social effects that can last for years. Now, as far as the origins of COVID goes, that's talked about a lot recently. One of the experts said in his opinion, we don't have enough information to be highly confident in either a laboratory source or a natural source for this pandemic. We need to be uh, continuing to seek answers. So those are some of the key takeaways that I got from this week's newsletter. As I said, this has been a great resource for me during this pandemic and for I'm sure countless others. And you know, they've done a great job. I wanna salute all the folks at the John Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center for providing this uh, resource free uh, to the public. So that's my message today. Be careful, take care folks. And remember COVID isn't over.